hello. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are in the world or you know where you are you when you're watching. You might be watching the recording. So I just want to welcome everybody. So good to be here today, this evening. Hello, hello. I'm seeing people are joining. It's so great. That's fantastic. Okay. So, so good to see familiar faces and names. That's great. I am absolutely delighted to host this workshop this evening. I hope you are excited too to be here with me this evening and learn three secrets about how to find a job, your dream job this year, 2022, stress-free. That's going to be our keyword today. And this is what we're going to explore more. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Andrea Reger. Some of you might know me. I see familiar names. It's good to see people I know. And it's good to meet new people. I always love meeting new people. So thank you so much for coming and meeting me. I am a founder of the Sustainable Career Navigation Program. And I am delighted to host this workshop for you this evening. I'm originally from Hungary, from Budapest, this lovely city and a country, but I've been living in Ireland in the past 17 years in Dublin. And I would like to know, where are you right now? If you please say hello in the chat box like Rosemary did. Hello, Rosemary. And please tell me, where are you originally from and where are you right now? today uh where are you calling from that would be fantastic two countries or two cities that would be great if you could share with us make sure that you type when you type it in you leave it to everyone rather than just to me okay island okay anybody else would like to share where they are Okay, maybe later, as you would like to share, please do it. We would love to know where you're calling from. And this evening, you will learn three practical, stress-free ways on how to start looking for your dream job and land in your dream job 2022. Also, how to connect, how to connect with yourself and with other people, and how to make the change you would like to make. So these are the topics we're going to cover. However, um, before we start, I would also like to do some temperature check. Hello, Andres. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Uh, you are in Germany. Uh, you were in Germany, Hungary, and I in Ireland. Great. Um, so please give me an idea. How are you feeling right now? Very relaxed, relaxed, ah, you don't know. Stress or very stressed? I would love to know which one of these faces you resonate the most. Yeah, if you can give me a word. I'm pretty much relaxed. I shouldn't and wouldn't say I'm very relaxed. Obviously, I'm super focused. I would like to deliver a fantastic workshop for you. So I am focused, but I am also relaxed. Great. We have mess. That's perfect. Medium stress. That's fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough, especially if you think about in Ireland now it's 7 p.m. So it's, you're probably after a very long working day. <laughs> you're probably tired as well as stressed, I would assume. Okay, that's fair enough. 
And now I'm interested in knowing what is the first word that you feel when you see this picture? What's the first word that comes to your mind? This is a lady being interviewed by a number of people. She is sitting in front of a panel and being interviewed by a number of people. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interview, but yeah, that's a synonym for an interview, I guess, on that <laughs> interrogation. Large interview panel, okay. What's the emotion that you think about when you see this picture? How do you think the person who's been being interviewed feels? If you remember when you were interviewed, how did you feel when you were interviewed? What comes to your mind? What is the feeling, the emotion? How do you think the person is feeling herself right now? Or how did you feel when you were in such a situation? Under pressure? Yeah, definitely pressure. Okay, okay. So with pressure, I guess the word stress might come to your mind straight away. Oh my God. Can you imagine more stressful situation than being in an interview? So artificial, right? Sitting in front of strangers most of the times and they are asking random questions about things that they should know because obviously it's on your CV and they are keep asking your questions for up to an hour even, it's so pressurized, you're right, and it's so stressful. So before I share tips how to cope with stress and stressful situation when it comes to looking for a job and then your dream job, let me tell you why is it important to recognize stress and what stress is really about. So very quickly and briefly in a nutshell, I tell you the definition, the science, the cause, and the consequences of being stressed and chronic stress. So the definition is a consistent sense of feeling under pressure and feeling overwhelmed over a long period of time. So when you are experiencing stress for a certain situation, that's good. You need to be alerted. You need to have the fight and fight mode in that moment to perform well. Stress is very good for that moment. However, if stress stays with you for a longer period of time, and I'm talking about months or even years, decades, that's chronic stress. And the feeling of pressure and overwhelming for such a long period of time is not sustainable. Our human body was not designed to cope with stress for so long. So here are the signs. How do you know that you are stressed? The, the stress has so many signs and people are pretty good at recognizing it. Fatigue, headaches when it comes to the physical signs, irritation, difficulty with breathing. When it comes to emotions, you actually feel lack of confidence. You actually start isolating. You're not sure. You have no courage and you are irritable. Table. You, went, you go into depression. You can't really sleep well. And obviously you have a lot of things going on in your mind. You start worrying. You have so many negative thoughts and you are judging yourself and others. And you start making various behavioral changes. Like you start using substances and abusing them like loads of coffees and coffeines, for example, or even alcohol and drug. And you become more and more isolated and you won't be able to sleep. So there are loads of signs at all levels of stress that people are actually very good at recognizing these days. When it comes to a workplace, so stress can be caused at the workplace by so many various areas and channels. When the organizational uh, change is happening, and believe me, in the fast-paced environment, in a software environment, uh, airline industry that I've worked, like change was the constant 
situation. There was no period of time when change was not in place. And organizational changes took place so often that it was just so natural. That man, that everybody was always so uncertain what's going to happen next. When you're concerned about your career, you don't really know where you are, where you're going. Uh, when there are lots of demands, you might be working in shifts, you have work overload, you're covering for someone for a period of time that actually turns out to be months or even, you know, a year because the person might not be able to come back. And that goes on and on for so long. You also could have some conflict about your role. You don't know what's expected from you. Nobody's giving you clear directions and support. And also when you have a little conflict with other people and when you have poor working conditions. These are all, all the major causes of stress at workplace. And we all know that stress contributes to many diseases and chronic illnesses like heart disease which is still the, the the leading cause of death these days in the world stroke high blood pressure colitis migraines diabetes you can read the list the list is actually very long this is just the tip of the iceberg what stress can cause to you so here is my story this is what I have done to date. I'm originally from Hungary. And before I left Hungary in 2005, I had my own company there. I was doing events for corporates uh, for four years. And transitioning from having my own company, moving to Ireland and starting building up my own career in Ireland from scratch, being cabin crew, and then a supervisor, and then an instructor. And then I took part in the management training program. So it took me a few years to work my way up to recruitment manager role. I landed in this role 2009 and I enjoyed that very much. I was working at that time on my master's degree to have a master's qualification. I also uh, got married and had two kids. Plus I was also working for my promotion, you know, what's next. Then I changed industry. So um, that was another transition for me, leaving the airline industry as head of recruitment and moving over to the software tech industry as recruiter working for Yahoo. That was a huge shift for me, which I was very happy to make, but like there is a point here I'm going to tell you later. And then I worked again my way up to senior recruiter, then in Marketo, then Autodesk. And within Autodesk, I had a six month assignment to cover for a senior manager role within the HR operations team. And after that, I landed back to my senior recruiter role uh, until last year. So that's what I've done today. So what I wanted to show you here that I was constantly working on my career. I was constantly putting myself forward either for a promotion or a country change or a career change or everything got together. I never stopped. I always fought, interviewed and did everything, you know, I thought my next step should be like. And since 2009, having a position and the role as recruiting manager, I've been on both sides of the table as well. So it's been almost 14 years. I am recruiting and interviewing and I'm being recruited and interviewed as well. So I have lots of experience being on both sides of the process and the table. So as you can see, I don't know what your feeling is about, you know, this career path, but it was exhausting. It's not sustainable. I needed to realize that this steep, career path cannot be sustained and you know what I, I'm not smart enough to recognize that my body was sending me signals to say stop it and the first wake up alarm was in 2016 when I received three wake up calls actually one in relation to my father's health one was in relation to my son's health and the other one was in relation to my own health so that was the point when I started looking a little bit, you know, outside of my paradigm, outside of my own line and values, and I looked a little bit around, but I was still carry on doing my stuff, being on a treadmill and just focusing on the next step, the next step, the next step. 
until 2022. And when 2021 came, my body shut down. And that was a clear sign. I was like, okay, that's it. I need to say goodbye to that period of my life. I cherish, I'm grateful for that. I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't gone through that. But that's time to say goodbye to and leave in the past and start a new chapter. So I've decided as of last year to do less of stress, less of holding on, holding on how many times I've heard that, keep on holding. I was like, what am I holding on to? I had no idea, but I was holding on, keep pushing, keep pushing. I was covering up. I wanted to be perfect. Nobody should see me how vulnerable I am because I wasn't. And I was giving myself such a big and hard time, you know, to look perfect. And I also realized that what I think is true might not necessarily be the case in all scenarios. So I started questioning things or even more doing my own research and started educating myself. And the world for me has opened up big time. It was amazing that, you know, when I realized that there are op options and opportunities to do different stuff or, 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 or look, look into other stuff, I came across so many other options that I didn't even think existed. And I also decided that I want my childhood. I want to bring the joy back to my life. So I want to do more that I enjoy, more swimming, more baking, more singing, more of the um, ceremony of cacao that I was introduced to last year. And it's been a fantastic medicine to me. And also I was exploring and experiencing alternative healing techniques, including homeopathy, which has been playing a big part of my and my family life ever since. And I decided that I would like to educate people, let people know that you have the options, because my vision has always been that everybody reaches their full potential in the, in the work, in a job, in a career that they are fully passionate about. That's my vision, an ideal futuristic world where everybody enjoys and passionate about the day to day. You spend like eight, 10, 12 hours a day working in an environment. I think we owe ourselves in this lifetime to allow to enjoy that period of time. And if not, it's going to be a hard life. And we don't deserve hard life, we deserve fun life as opposed to hard one. And I also believe that you can land your dream job stress-free. There are techniques I like to share with people and educate them to explore yourself further, you know, that you can achieve what you want without making yourself ill, creating some physical, you know, signs and symptoms for yourself. You don't need those signs and there is help for you to avail of. So, First of all, how can you do that when you are looking for a job and you want to change? So in preparation for changing your career, the first thing I'd like you to take away from today is gratitude. Be being grateful for what you have, what you have achieved, where you are. And you would be surprised how much you have already achieved, how much what you wanted a year ago, five years ago, you already have. So just pause for a moment and be happy for yourself and say thank you for yourself. And looking at this picture, for example, and looking at any life events. So this represents any situations that you, know, you might look at on a daily basis. You might, one might say that, oh, poor man, like he has such a big cup and oh, the coffee beans are falling so little. He's never going to get his cup full. Or you might say, oh, how lucky he is that he can, first of all, have such a big cup. Second of all, how strong he is that he can hold such a big cup. And third of all, he is so lucky of the you know, abundance of the coffee beans that falling. Lucky him, he will have his cup full very soon. So it all depends 
what your approach to the situation is, how you interpret what you say, what is your inner story going in your own head, what is what you're telling yourself about the situation. And the mindset is very important. I'm going to tell you a, a story very short. A couple of weeks ago, we went out playing bowling, you know, the traditional bowling, and people were trying to roll the ball and nobody kind of hit it. And whenever they had one or two hits, they were all complaining. It was so funny to watch, by the way. I was entertained to hell. I really enjoyed that hour when I was watching people's reaction. And no matter if there was one, two, three, four, five, or eight hits, they were complaining, oh, it's so crap, this is an old alley, I'm never going to be good at it, oh, I'm sore, I'm this, I'm that. I'm like, oh my god, just appreciate that you at least, you know, you can roll the ball and you hit those numbers. So after one hour, when everybody kind of gave up that they would ever strike nine, I went there and I was like, okay, try it. <laughs> and of course, the first one went right to the right and the second one straight to the left. So I was like, okay, now I know two ways how not to do it. And then I was trying to adjust, you know, the power and the angle a little bit. And when I hit my, had my first hit, I was so happy. I was like, yes, I have now one. And then I had two, three, four, five, six, seven. I went up to eight as well. And I celebrated every single one of them. And the funny thing was that no matter what realistically I hit, I always saw like nine on the screen in my head. And I felt I could do that. So the end of the story is that after 45 minutes of me trying, I had a stripe, full nine were down and I cleared the whole alley. And I was the only person who did that. And not to mention, I was probably the least experienced one. Some people might have been going there every other week, or we had actually a couple of sportsmen or in the bunch of the 15 of us who went there. And still, I was the only one who hit it because I kept up this mindset. Um, it is very important that you do have the right mindset. And the behavior and the paradigm is also very important. These are the key, uh, three key things that you need to remember. Remember also the box. Most of the times you are advised, think outside of the box, be creative. Now I'm asking you the opposite. Think inside the box. When it comes to job application and job interview, think inside the box. There is an advertisement, job advertisement, and you're going to apply. You need to push the time, effort, energy, and focus into every single application, cover letter, CV tweaking, and interview rounds you are making. The recruiter, hiring manager, or whomever is reading your CV or interviewing you on the phone, Zoom, or in person when we can do it again, has no idea, no knowledge what you had gone through up until that point in time. And guess what? Behind the, the scenes, secret. They don't care. What they care is what you do there, that moment in time. What's written on your CV when they read it, what's written on your cover letter if you have it, and what and how you say things, what you're saying over the phone or during the interview on Zoom or in person, that point in time. Nothing else matters. You might have had five rejections previously, um, but that one doesn't count. They don't know anything about that. What they know is how you behave. And you know that only 7% of our communication is down to the words you're saying. Everything else is body language and tone, intonation and volume. So it's very important that you keep your enthusiasm, motivation, fire, interest, open minus up. No matter if it's a first application or your 100th application, no matter if it's your first round interview or your six rounds interviews. I'm telling you, I've been through six rounds of interviews and I know the last thing what I wanted is tell again why I wanted this position and why I thought I would be the best applicant for the role. I hated saying that, but still, mask on, performance on, show on, 
and you do your best because those people have no idea what you shared before. And that's very important. You go into your box, it's empty, it's dull. You go there and you decorate it with your colors, with your behavior, with your attitude. This is your opportunity. And you can have multiple boxes running at the same time, but you need to go individually in the box, do your best and come out and leave whatever experience, emotions you have inside the box. You reflect, you learn from it, and you take the learning with you, but you don't take the emotion with you, okay? So that's very important, this message from me to you. So mindset is important, attitude, behavior, and having the paradigm is also vital, and I'm going to give you more information on that as well in a few minutes. But before I do, I'd like to ask you, give me number one, in the chat box if you see an old lady here and give me number two if you see a young lady and give me number three if you see both so let's see is it number one old lady number two young lady or you see both oh great somebody see both okay somebody see old lady young lady are you sure you're looking at the same picture? <laughs> this is the beauty of the different perspectives we are all having. All of us have a different viewpoints and we are looking at the same picture. So look at this. Here is the young lady in profile and here is the old lady, right? So can you see both now? Yeah? Yeah. So remember, your experience is unique. It only belongs to you. Nobody on this earth has experienced the same thing that, than you. If somebody tells you, I know what you feel, they have no idea. How would they know? <laughs> only you know what you have gone through. So this is unique, what you have, and you have to be proud of it and cherish it. But you have to accept that the other person might not see what you're seeing, and that's okay too. One box at a time, one day at a time, one focal point at a time. And accept what has been already done and you cannot change. If somebody rejected your application, accept this. It's done, you've done your best, you learn from it and you move on. You don't carry that grudge or feeling or anything with you because that's doing no good for you. It's only doing harm and you don't want to do that. You say thank you for the experience. Thank you for the feedback if you are received and you move on and you are going to do it differently the next time, I bet. So when it comes to gratitude, the first learning is think inside the box. Okay, the second one, how do I connect? It's very important, especially these days. We are over two years now into this very unique situation, how to connect with ourselves, with a community, with other people and with the world all together. So you only can connect with other people if you are connected to yourself. What? Do you mean you are connected with yourself? This is crazy. Of course, I'm connected with myself. I'm with myself all the time. You would be surprised how many people, including myself up until last year, really, I was living my life in my head all the time, thinking, 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 thinking. I couldn't stop the chatter inside my head. And I had no idea how to reach, how to go down to my chest area where my heart is and try to share what I know here, but from a care, from um, a, a loving you know, approach. It was all about reasoning and thinking. And sometimes you feel, okay, I make a progress and I slide back down and I give it up. It's never going to happen. But there is an opportunity to link the two things, the thinking and your heart. It is absolutely vital that everybody finds the way how you can link it with yourself. Some of you might 
do yoga. Some of you might, I don't know, walk the dog. There are different ways of doing things. I would love to know which works for you. Is there any secrets that you've tried and is working for you? How you relax, how you, you know, just connect with yourself and you listen to yourself. If there is any secrets that you can share with us, please do in the chat box. And while you're doing that, I'm sharing you a little story to tell you why is it important to find a way to come back to our center and find the balance between you know, the, the working hard and the working smart. Um, there was a lumberjack, a lumber man who was hired to cut, let's say, 30 trees every week. And he started working and the first week he cut 35 trees and they were like so happy with them, with him. And the second week he cut 30 and they were like, okay, you are actually, your performing is dropping, but this is still what we hired you for, so we are still all right. And then as the week progresses, his performance went down and down by five every week, 25, 20, 15. He got warnings. There was a disciplinary he meeting. He was, you know, put in front of so many things to make sure that he improves. And he did so much. He changed his attitude, was so positive. He saw that he can do. He visualized the 35 trees. He worked hard. He changed his behavior. He worked through his lunch. He did extra hours, but no matter what he did, no matter how much he changed his attitude and behavior, his performance was still dropping down until he wasn't able to cut no trees at all. And he was fired. And he went home and he got depressed. And there was a neighbor who just knocked uh, on his door and wanted to borrow his ex. And when he handled his axe to the neighbor, the neighbor said, this is useless. It's just so dull. There is no edge on it. And then he realized no matter how hard he worked, he didn't take time to sharpen his axe. So this is the learning for you. Working hard is very important. But if you don't take a step back to connect with nature, to connect with yourself, to work, give yourself self-care, self-love, and nourish you as a human being that you spend 24 hours with a day, it's not going to happen on the long term. It's not sustainable to keep up your motivation, your attitude, and your behavior. So this is a very important one when it comes to connect yourself. When it comes to connecting with others, that's another very um, um, like story I, I can share. It's, it's a very um, good learning as well. You do not know where your next employer is or where your next recruiter is going to show up. I know these days it's very difficult to connect with each other. But when you are standing in a line and you do your grocery shopping, for example, <laughs> I know it's funny because we don't do that, but start chatting with the people or when you are on the bus, instead of, you know, being so focused on yourself, maybe ask the person. I know it's weird. Sometimes you can get the look what you want. How would you dare asking? How am I? But you would be surprised people might open up for you and you might have a nice conversation or on the plane, you know, start chatting with people around you and make, start making more and more connections in real life as well as online. Now talking about real life, I give you another example. A couple of years ago, I needed a help with some cleaning. And I had a lady who came to my house a couple of times. The first two times we didn't really spoke. Um, uh, she, uh, she did her job, it was fantastic. I was absolutely amazed by her. She did an excellent job, well beyond my expectations. And it turned out when we started chatting a couple of you know um, times later, that she was so unhappy in her current job as cleaner. I was like, how can you do such an amazing job when you're miserable in a job that your day job that she's doing? So long story cut short, she didn't know I was a recruiter at the time, but there was an opening for a janitor job in the company I worked for. So I recommended her to apply and I also helped her preparing. She was, 
she needed some help. She needed some help around her English and also, you know, getting used to the interview environment, mock interviews, uh, CV tweaking and so on. So I prepped her and she went for the janitor interview and she got the job. So first of all, she got the job that was normal working hours and it was a huge salary difference as well in comparison to the job that she had before. And within the company, there was an office-based position opening up a year after she started as a janitor and she worked very hard between you know that year or during that year and uh, she went for the uh, the office based role and she was successful getting it and it's been now two or three years she is thriving in the job this is her dream job she hadn't worked in an office environment ever before in her life. And she is in her late thirties now, a single mom to a child. It was more important for her to work hard to make sure there is an income rather than be strategical and try to land in her dream job. But when we met, that a whole opportunity came up that she hadn't even dreamt of could happen. So what I'm saying here, keep your mind open, try to make connections. You have no idea, you never know who is the person who you're going to help you so naturally without even asking, just by making the connections. When it comes to an online presence, I would like to ask you uh, if we haven't connected yet on LinkedIn, please find me. I would love to be in touch and connection with you so we can follow up later if you have any questions. Uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. That's how you find me. If you can't write this down now, don't worry. I will send you the link and I'm also putting this link into the chat box now. So feel free to connect with me. I can send you the recording. So if you couldn't remember now or write it down, I send you the recording and you will be able to do that when you watch the recording. So I would love to be in touch with you after this workshop. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm writing this over here too. And this is the social connection with me, but also for you finding a mentor, an advocate, a referee is very important. A coach, a career coach, that could be an option as well for you if you're at this stage where you need some professional help and join in you know, a group of like-minded people that you really, really enjoy doing. And like, let's say you you have a soccer club that you go to or a yoga or pilates or swimming or whatever is you are into. Just start talking to people, connect with them, not just on Instagram, Facebook, but on LinkedIn as well, and find out what they do and how you can help each other. It's going to be a brand new, new world opening up for you. And if you want other people to recommend you for a job, to refer you for a job, why don't you start make recommendations for other people? So if you want help, first offer help. It works big time. For example, if you go ahead tonight after this call and you start making recommendations for five people you know, believe me, those five people, will come back to you thanking you and that's your opportunity asking them to write recommendations about you and it can be your teacher your ex boss manager supervisor your teammate your classmate anybody you have no idea how wide your network already is but reaching out to your existing network and making recommendations for them and in exchange they will give recommendations about you is very important. Also, making extra 10 new connections on LinkedIn is something you can do for the next 30 days. Set up um, a time, five minutes every day on LinkedIn and just click on 20 people you know and start connecting and see what happens. Your network will flourish big time. So when it comes to connection, remember, sharpen your axe, make connection with yourself and make connection with your surroundings in real life and online as well. Everywhere we are living our lives these days. And now how to change your mindset and attitude and approach. So here is the thing. I've touched this already two times during this presentation, that changing your attitude and mindset is very, very important. 
So you think about, we spoke about the box, you go in there and you, your attitude and behavior, what you do inside the box is important. But if you're not getting inside the right box, no matter what you do, it's not gonna work. Your attitude, your behavior doesn't really matter if the box that you've selected is not right. So sometimes you need to stretch your values, your beliefs, your paradigms that you think this point in time is the truth and the only truth. I've done it in the past, never questioned anything that my society, my family, my teachers, the history was telling me, oh, that's the right thing. And when I started educating myself, the whole new world opened up and I was able to stretch my life for the better, for, for the, the, the more abundant way. So how do you do that? In order to do that, you need to recognize that there is a need for a paradigm change, a value change. So here is my story around that. Let's say you are back in the 1980s, there's no GPS or Google Maps, and you have the old fashioned printed maps in your hand. And it is a map of, of Chicago, but at the top it's printed New York. Uh, and you are in New York and you want to get to Times Square, but you're looking at the printed map of Chicago. So how will you get to Times Square? So you can change your attitude and you can say, yes, I am positive. I will get there. I am absolutely sure I can do that. And you keep up a very positive mind. You can change your behavior. You can start running or you can cycle or you can hire a cab you will get to the wrong place quicker and happier. But you're still going to end up in a wrong place. You're still going to be lost. You won't get to Times Square if you're not looking at the right map. So that's very important. You need to make sure that what is guiding you, what you are focusing on, is the one that will get you where you want to go. And most of the people need help with that, or most of the people that find difficult to break through or even question things. And establishing your own personal vision, mission, and goals is something that would give you clarity on what's important to you. And realizing that what's important to my family, my country, my society, my company is one thing, and I can cherry pick things from everywhere and create my own mission, vision, and values. And that's where your power is. And I invite you to do that. Okay, uh, it's just an example of my choices. So um, I loved coffee and what I realized, you know, for being a little bit anxious, it doesn't help drinking too many coffees. The caffeine is not great. So I changed over to cacao and ceremonial cacao gave me such a nice focus, super food relaxation um, that I needed. And I also still use over the count and prescription medicines, but homeopathy also added, you know, to the options I can choose from. And now I make more conscious decisions if I use this or if I use that. So all I'm saying here is that find your own way what works for you. Okay, so when it comes to change, think about the map. And I'd like to share a big thing with you. I know yesterday was Valentine's Day and I would like to extend Valentine's Day for you from yesterday to today and give you all a 50 euro bonus in a form of a free consultation. So I would recommend you to think about this opportunity. If you feel stuck in your current situation and you want a better paid job in the software industry, that's my background has been in the past six years and previously in the airline industry. Or if you would like to address stress and anxiety using side effect free and natural remedies and techniques, or if you want to land your dream job this year, this is your time to avail of this free 
50 euro worth of consultation. So if you'd like to do that, hit me with a yes, please. And I will be in touch with you after this call. Just give me a yes in the chat box. And I will arrange a time in the next couple of days for 20 minutes, completely free call. And this call will be completely about you. I will explore. Yes, Andres, we have the first yes. Who else would like to avail of this opportunity? And we will only talk about you, nothing else, just you. Where are you in your career? What is holding you back? to get and land where you would like to be. And we can map out some steps for you if you're interested, how you might be able to get there. So feel free, please, to hit me with the yes here or email me if you are listening to the recordings, info at archisland.com. And I'm putting this email address in the chat box as well. In the subject area, just say yes. And I will know this is about a 50 euro worth of present from me to you to spend 20 minutes to talk about you, your plans, and give you some help based on my 15 years experience being on both sides. Um, the good news I wanted to share with you is that those people who worked with me, they've gained a lot of things during you know, the work we've done, confidence, happiness, and balance in their life. I shared and they gained a lot of knowledge on how to apply for jobs, how to do an application, how to prepare for an interview to do before on the day and after the day. And they've gained higher salary, which is obviously a very important thing for many people. And the dream job, which is, by the way, the most important thing, I believe, at the end of the day, to feel the passion, the enthusiasm, the fire, and live our life with joy. So that was my workshop today for you. And the recap that we've covered today was we spoke about gratitude, how to think inside the box when it comes to job application and interviews, how to connect with yourself and with your, with your uh, surroundings, sharpen your ex when you need it, take some time off, think and make connections online and offline too and make the change if you want a change. Explore the opportunities, don't be afraid. Okay, and I mentioned that there is a free 20 minutes one-on-one -on -one, and whenever you feel like, please hit me up, this offer will be closed in 10 days on the 25th of February. So if you want to avail of this 50 euro worth of gift from me to you, please let me know by the 25th of February. Okay, thank you very much. Gracias. Köszönöm szépen. Dziękuję, danke schön, merci. And before you go, I'd like to open up for questions and answers. And if you can take, if you can share some takeaways, what is your main takeaway from today? I would really appreciate. Thank you so much to all of you. Please share just one word with me in the chat box. If you want to share it only with me, not everybody, it's fine as well. Just tell me what has been the main takeaway this workshop that you will think about or you will take away and maybe use. Okay, having a right mindset and the box, wrong map. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Any questions? While you're writing your takeaways, I can share a question or two what has been asked from me the most. First of all, um, if somebody is asking your current salary or salary expectations, what is the right answer? So that is a very good question because it all depends on the situation. There are situations when telling your current salary is what needed for you in order to position yourself. However, there are situations when a salary expectation would be more appropriate. So for example, if you are a fresh graduate 
and you have no idea what the market is paying for like an MBA or an HR degree, you can go very wrong telling the recruiter that my salary expectation is, let's say, 35 or 19 because you don't really know, you don't have this experience. Um, It also depends on the company, the industry as well. So doing some research and finding out from other people who might be working for the same company would be a very good advice or asking the recruiter if they have any salary range. Most of the times the recruiter are, recruiters are willing to share the range. However, don't be surprised if the range is very, very, very broad. Because obviously the range is prepared for people with no experience, some experience and more experience. So um, knowing the industry, knowing you know, what you bring into the position is very important. Um, yeah, that's about the salary. Yes, salary expectations, yeah. Um, do you have any questions around that, Rosemary, that you would like me to explore more on? Feel free to type it in, or you can unmute yourself as well if that's easier. Yes, I'm going from like a manager position and I'm sort of transition. So I'm going from a manager position and I want to go into a HR generalist role. But the but I, I it seems like like I'm gonna have to take a salary drop. But it's like trying to navigate through well, how much do I realistically take? And I just find that that a little bit tricky when it comes to salary expectations. Exactly. So this is a perfect case that you've described when sharing your current salary would be highly not advised for you to do <laughs> you would definitely rule yourself out I would say you know from, yeah. from the rounds so for you I guess the answer would be that you are very realistic that you're making a transition a shift you know from one area to another one and you recognize it although you have valuable experience and you need to make sure that those experiences and skills like uh, could be very well transferable into what you're doing so don't ever like undervalue your experience you know whatever you did before into something maybe new that you're going in because most of the skills are transferable believe me but having said that if you apply for a junior role they 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 have the brackets so they're not going to pay you what you worth they're going to pay what the role itself generates for the company, but what they value the role for, not what they value your skills for. Yes, and makes sense. What you need to make sure that you are okay with that. And that's when I refer back to establishing your vision and your mission and your goals. It's very important because if you know why you take this and where is this going to bring me, might help you to make a decision easier or be okay with a drop and you know what you need to do next and if you're not working this out in advance that could that could disappoint you very easily right so you you have to be probably smart and tactical strategical about this move thank you that's very helpful andrea yeah good (laughs) And Rosemary, I would be more than happy to talk about this, you know, with you on a one-on-one. So um, if that's something that... Yeah, let's definitely do that. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Like no obligation, just a chat. And yeah, it's all about you then. Great. I will reach out to you and we'll do that. Okay. Any questions, Andres, you might have or... Okay. Well... I'm looking forward to connecting with all of you. So thank you so much again for attending this workshop. I loved spending this time, I hope, and thank you for sharing your takeaways. I wish you the very, very best of luck. Have a good night, evening, and day, depending when you watch it, and speak with you very soon.
Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.